Hi, welcome to the University of Calgary iGEM Models tutorial. We are happy to introduce you to our novel model, MCM GEM. MCM GEM stands for the Membrane Computing Model of Genetically Engineered Machines. In this framework, we apply a membrane computing approach to AI2 signaling system. By watching this tutorial, you will become an expert who can generate amazing results out of this unique model. This is our model's interface. We strongly believe, besides the fact that a model should be able to produce accurate and useful outputs, it should also be user-friendly and informative. In respect to this point, many features have been added to this model. These features are accessible from this interface. The good news about this model is that users, who are mostly biologists, are able to work with it and generate amazing results, without needing to know how the code works. This is the beauty of Mathematica, the high-level programming language that it used to implement this framework. So let's have a short tour in this interface. There are three different tabs on the top, Input, Visualization, and About. Input tab includes two sub-tabs, Simulation Parameters and Rule Constants. Under Simulation Parameters, we have different parameters to set before running the simulation. To get the user started, each parameter is set to a default value. Users are able to modify each value before running the program. We will talk about these parameters once we talk about how the biological system works. In order to do so, an animated tutorial is designed and placed under the Visualization tab. Users are able to reach this animation by simply clicking a button. The animation demonstrates a bacterial cell, where a cytoplasmic space is located at the middle of the cell, and the periplasmic space encloses it. Anything outside of this cell is referred to as environment. At the right side of the panel, there is a graphical legend which helps the user find how each of the chemicals involved in the system is presented in the animation. The AI2 signaling system contains two cascades, where the first cascade occurs in absence of AI2 molecules. In this condition, the LUX-PQ complex acts as a kinase and phosphorylates cytoplasmic protein LUX-U. Phosphorylated LUX-U then acts as a kinase itself and adds a phosphate to DNA binding response regulator protein LUX-O. Lastly, the phosphorylated LUX-O would bind to a complex of transcription factor, namely sigma-54 and RNA-4 promoter, which signals the expression of GFP protein. GFP emits light so the bacterium glows. As you can see, each of the interactions that are taking place in the system is written at the bottom of the panel. The second cascade occurs when AI2 is present and eventually enters the periplasmic space of bacteria. Therefore, this sensor switches from being kinase to phosphatase, resulting in LUX-PQ removing the phosphate group from LUX-U. Since LUX-U can just act as a kinase, it is not able to dephosphorylate the LUX-O. However, the housekeeping phosphates slowly take away the phosphate off LUX-O, which does not bind to the PQRR4 promoter, thus turning off the signal. Without the signal, the bacteria are no longer able to produce GFP and they will turn dark by the degradation of the existing GFP. This model provides interactive results that could be used to qualitatively analyze the biological system. We have utilized the use of various tools such as graphs, charts, and matrices to present the results. For example, in this matrix, each column represents one of 20 E. coli bacteria. The state of the model bacteria over a period of 5,000 simulated time steps is depicted along the vertical axis. The color of each cell indicates the binding degree between AI2 and the LUX-PQ complex. The color spectrum spans from red, no binding, over white to blue, complete binding. As time progresses, an increasing amount of AI2 is produced by LUX-S and gets bound to LUX-PQ. This was a very short intro to our model. We hope you enjoyed it. For further information, please visit our website and see you at Jamboree.